deacons, deaconesses, family and friends. <clears throat> I'm going to start with a prayer. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're coming to you knowing that you are the lovers of our souls. Uh -huh. And understanding that only you have the power to work in ways that are sometimes not understood by us. Yes. Lord, we ask that during those times when we stray from your word, that you pull us back into your arms yes. uh -huh. and hold us tight, Lord. Yes. Please teach us. teach us. Help us to focus and apply your word in our daily lives. Yes. Keeping us upright and moving forward according to your will, not ours, Lord. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have situations that seem hopeless. We ask that you cover those situations. Lord, we know that as long as you are in control, your word is the final word, and that nothing is over until you say it is. Lord, we're asking for a renewal of our spirit, our strength, and our faith in you. Father, we will continue to seek you yes. and put you above all things. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, the scripture that I'm going to be preaching from was Jeremiah 18, 1 and 4. We've already gone over it once, but I'm going to read it to you one more time. Is that okay? Amen. As the war, as the Lord, excuse me, Lord, help me. Gotcha. Let me back up a little bit. Gotcha. Could you stand for the reading of the word? Amen. Work with me, Lord. As the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying. Mm -hmm. Arise, and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Amen. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. Right. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Mm -hmm. yes. So he made it again into another vessel. Yes. As it seemed good to the potter to make. Amen. You may now be seated and may God bless the hearers, readers, and doers of his word. Amen. My message is coming to you today in three points. The first, about being marred. All right. Point two is going to be when we submit our lives. Mm -hmm. And point three, three types of prayers. Mm -hmm. You'll understand when I finish. I struggled for the title for this message, but it came to me after several titles over and over again. And I titled this message as, When We Give In and Exhale and Say Yes, Lord. All right. Mm. When we give in yeah. and exhale and say, Yes, Lord. Yeah. <coughs> Do you see the word marred? The meaning is, in this contents, marred, clay was marred, spoiled, messed up. In the potter's hands, and the potter reworked, remolded it into another vessel. <clears throat> in this scripture, we have the word of God. Arise, meaning get up. Yeah. Now go down to the potter's house. I want you to understand that the potter is Christ Jesus. My Lord. Mm -hmm. To me, the word go down to the potter's house. The Holy Spirit is saying to me in this scripture, get down on your knees and pray, 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 and pray. Amen. Right. At the potter's house, things are made. That's right. People are remade. Amen. I was remade into new from old. All right. In Genesis 2nd chapter 7 verse. Then the Lord God formed man of the dust from the ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. 
and the man became a living being. That's right. The ground, clay, dirt, soil. Pretty young people, I want you to think about that. When we are in the hands of a great potter, okay. things are made new and usable as it seemed good to the potter to make. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' eyes, not man's. I want to guide your attention to this remark. I will cause you to hear my words. Mm -hmm. The potter is not speaking. He is just working. Amen. Some things are done and you just know and understand. Breaking us down and building us new. Yeah. 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 So we go to point two. My God. When we submit our lives to Jesus as clay. Mm -hmm. Are you like clay in our father's hands? My God. Mm -hmm. I became clay in his hands. And I'm still clay today. Thank you Lord. As he remakes me. Do you remember when he reshaped you? Mm -hmm. He did bend and reshape us and to people whom he can use, not could use, can use, and is using right now, today. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Say that. Yes. I recall when I understood how marred I was. <laughs> the Spirit said to me as I was studying and came across this passage, if anyone, regardless of position, your educational background, business contacts, or political influence, may the Lord help you to see this aspect, that there is no sacred cow in this matter. My God. Every man must go through this, otherwise he will be left out of the word of God. Yeah. In Titus 2, 11 and 12, it writes, or it reads, for the grace of God that brings salvation mm -hmm. has appeared to all men, yeah. teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, mm -hmm. righteously, yeah. and godly in the present age. Mm -hmm. yeah. The potter has the power over the clay to allow defects or to reshape the pot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The strategy is not to become mindless and passive. That is one aspect of clay. All right. But to be willing and receptive to God to impact on us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When we repent, Christ begins reshaping us into valuable vessels. That's right. That's right. I went on my knees. On my knees. Mm -hmm. Point three. I'm on my knees now. I want to speak to you about my three phases of prayers that shaped me and how Jesus remade me inside the potter's house. Mm -hmm. The three types of prayers as he shaped me. There are more types, but for today, I want to speak on these three concerning me. Is that okay? Amen. All right. <clears throat> The first was the angry prayer and how the Father shaped me from whom I was to what I am today. Okay. The second, the sad prayer, when I started to see my faults. Third, the joyful prayer, when he filled me with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But it was start with the angry prayer, an example. That day when you or I was so upset and yelling, how could this have happened to me? It takes me back to a time where I thought I was in charge of my life and I had everything laid out. I had plans made. I was going to do this and that was going to fall into place. Say that, man. And I went down and I had to take an examination and I didn't get what I should have gotten. But I found out that I had more that I could have used, but I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't get the job. Have you ever felt that way? You say to God, I don't understand. I prayed. I lived the best way I knew how to. Wasn't that good enough, Lord? My God. And then why? If only I had seen, 
or if they would have just told me about that part. Maybe I could have done something. My whole prayer turned to if I or they only had told me. You see, so many ways that things could have gone, but here you are, standing, tears flowing down your face, and as mad as you could be at God. Then God showed me self. My God. My nature. Amen. I found this meaning of self. Self is who a man is, independent of anyone else, including God. Self is that ignorant, disobedient, rebellious nature that makes it difficult for a man to put God in his rightful position. All right, all right. In Romans 8 and 7. It does not submit to God's law. Mm -hmm. I was that. I love to be noticed. My God. An independent man. Mm -hmm. Love to succeed. Very defensive. Insist on my way. Mm -hmm. Proud. Protect myself and my own interests. Not satisfied with what I have. Mm -hmm. I had that independence that comes from confidence in what I possess. I'm in my sad prayer now. My tears start flowing with sadness. I fell to my knees, and you may have fell into your knees as well. And you say, my God, what is wrong with me? It was all my fault. I am so sorry if I would have been a better person. The pain and the heartache, you're now a quiet talking with humbleness to God. In the prayer, this is what I did, asking for guidance, standing at a crossroad in my life. Amen. You see, he took me and he showed me some things. I had a, a dream, and in the dream, I saw myself running through his building, and God rewound that dream and allowed me to see myself and talk to myself. And it told me, slow down, stand still, look and see what the God is gonna do. He took something that I had for years thought one way and I saw it another. One day I was in a church service and I decided to get up and sing a song. And for you all that know me, I don't sing. <laughs> but I sang the song, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. I had seen this on a television show. And so I decided when it was time for testimony service, I was going to sing. And I sung that song. When I finished, no one said a word. <laughs> I was paused. I didn't understand. The saints will normally say, bless you, son. That was good. I made my way to the pastor and I said, what happened? He said, sometimes when you can't say nothing good, you just don't say anything. Well, the message I got from that was, I should go practice. I should get better. I can do this. But no. What God showed me was, the reason they didn't like it was because he was doing it for self. Amen. He was doing it to be noticed. Amen. You wanted to show and make them accept what you were doing. Yes. You were not in the right spirit. So what I was offering was not acceptable. All right. My heart, my heart had to be purged. Amen. By this Amen. time when he revealed this to me, I was saying, oh Lord, I was laying on the floor in the house and I was, I was crying. I said, God, is that me? Am I that selfish, ignorant man? Have I been motivated in doing things because I wanted to appease man? I wasn't doing your word? He said, yes. Oh my God. But then I stopped crying out of sadness and I had tears of joy when I had that wow 
Or you have that moment of, wow, what just happened? Did I just, oh my God, this is so good. It's like three old good. Not two O's, but three. God has come through. As the old saints say, it's like fire shut up in my bones. And I could not sit down. So much love and joy flowing into me from the Holy Spirit. The word to the song comes, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Conclusion. Did you notice when I spoke about the differences in prayers? You heard words like I, they, we, if, should. Those words are when we are alone feeling those different ways about life as it comes at us. Jesus understood because as some might say, he walked in our shoes as a man. In Matthew 26 and 39, I paraphrase, he fell on his face and said, oh my father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. God wants us to hold on to our faith. He understands us in all our different ways. We must keep him and his word at the core of our being, looking to him daily. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord.